I just bought my first 3D printer, and I thought today we could go over what does that even mean? Like, how much did it cost to buy? How much does it cost to print a model? How do you make models? Or where do you find them? Like this NES cartridge that holds Switch games. Pretty cool. There's been good and bad things over the past month of owning this, and I thought today I could unpack them all for you to help you decide if this is something you want to get into. Let's take it out. G'day, I'm Cam, and first things first, I'm gonna get it out of the box and build it. I bought the Ender 3 V2. It's a budget printer coming in at 320 bucks. It's semi-flat packed in the box, so some assembly is required, and this took me just over two hours to build. I followed an amazing build guide by a Tomb of 3D Horrors, which helped provide handy tips over the included user manual. Remember, this is my first ever 3D printer, so you bet I'm watching a how-to guide. So with the printer built, you can now see how it works. So the build plate goes forwards and back on our Y axis, the head goes side to side on the X axis, and those are both belt driven by stepper motors. And on the back, there's a big threaded rod to move the Z axis up and down by our third stepper motor. This allows the printer to move the nozzle to anywhere within its build space cube. And this size is dependent on the model of printer that you purchase. And this obviously will directly impact the size of prints that you can create. Now, before I could start printing, it took me about two hours to level my bed. This is a manual process, but it should definitely not take that long. Leveling the bird is a term you'll hear everywhere when people talk about printers. This doesn't mean level to the ground, it means level to the nozzle of the printer. The most common way to achieve this is to rub a piece of paper between the nozzle and the build surface at all four corners. Once you feel friction at all four corners, then the build plate is level in relation to the nozzle. But my problem was that the center of my bed was lower than everything else. This is insane. It took me so long to search up and try and find how to fix this, and it's just a defect of the build plate itself. I reached out to Creality, which are the manufacturers of this printer for advice or a warranty claim. I haven't received a response back yet, and it's been a month, so I'm gonna say that's not happening. To resolve the issue, I added aluminum foil. This raised it just enough to make it dead flat. Now, we are dealing with tolerances of 0.1 of a millimeter and less. That's 0.01 centimeters. It's insane <laughs> thin amount, and that will make a drastic difference to your print. My first 3D print was this little astronaut by Matter Hackers. Uh, I used the included white filament that came in the box with the printer and some pretty lightweight printer settings. And well, this resulted in me accidentally breaking his legs off when removing from the build plate. Okay, so now we've got a printer that can print, uh, but how the frick does it even work? Well, the best example I heard was a hot glue gun on a robot arm. It's an easy way to visualize it, right? So we've all used a hot glue gun in primary school. You get the cold glue, you stick it in, it gets heated up, it melts, and it comes out the other end as a thin little nozzle of glue. Well, that's what you do with 3D printing and filament. Filament is the sky. It comes on like a spool like this, and it's long, hard plastic. And this stuff goes through the printer, gets heated up, melts, and then it dries into the hard plastic model that you want. This can come in many type of materials, ABS, nylon, carbon fiber infused. Uh, this here is a roll of PLA+. Plus. PLA is the most popular uh, type of filament just because it's very easy to get consistent results and also to store. You don't have to worry about uh, too much keeping it in a humid controlled environment. This guy is pretty good. This costs 27 bucks for a kilo. How much does that actually like equate to for a model? Well, that's where our slicer comes into play. So we've got our model here on the screen. Now, if we look down in the bottom corner here, we can see it's gonna tell us how long it's gonna to take to print. 20 hours and five minutes. Yeah, that's quite a bit of time. And it's gonna use 153 grams of filament. From that, we can calculate the cost. Uh, it's gonna use 153 grams and the price was 27 bucks per kilogram, whatever the heck that is, I'll put it on the screen. Quick math. Now, the next thing we wanna check out is the preview of the print. So it's going to print up this way to get to the top. It prints in layers. The slicer's name makes a lot of sense because you're slicing the print into layers as the print head moves up. So 665 layers to create this 3D model. Now, if we bring it all the way down to the bottom, you can actually go back and play where the nozzle is going to go. It moves up and it prints up the layers. At any point, you can check 
what it will actually do. It's so cool. It's very, very entertaining to look at this. Now, when it comes to inside your model, you have an option of how filled in you want it to be. Do you want it to be very hollow or do you want it to be solid? And obviously the, the amount of infill, that's what it's called, inside the model that you choose will use more filament. So if you want it to be tough and you make it 100%, it's going to chew through that roll of filament and cost you a lot more money. But it's obviously going to provide more rigidity and strength over time. Now, you never see that. That's on the inside of the model, but it adds some strength. But you can also see coming up the inside here, up the guts, this straight lattice effect. That is what we call a support. Supports are required if you are defying gravity. If we flip this model upside down, anything that's red, that is defying gravity. So this is hollow, but in the top here, there's a red section because you can't print in thin air. You can't just be like, it'll just turn into noodles. It'll just like squiggle out into nowhere. With the case of this, I actually use tree supports. And here it is. What the heck is that? It's a, it's a tree. It's so cool. When you print, this will print out. Here it is here. That's, a, that's that little tree. It looks so weird. You can see exactly how it wraps around and provides support for all of these little ridges uh, that are on the side there. This is wasted filament. This costs you money and time printing. You can't do anything with it unless you want to make a collection of plastic trees, <laughs> but uh, it, that's just a part of printing, but that's a really cool intricate thing. So once you've figured out your infill amounts, so how strong you want to make it, you can then have to figure out your support structures. And once you've done that, you can save it to a file, chuck it on an SD card and plug that into the printer and it'll print. Okay. So now we know how to take, I'm going to over there, 3D models and convert them into G code or printer language through our slicer. You follow? Um, now you need to, we need to get 3D models. So what do you need? 3D models can come in many different formats, just like a music or movie file. You can have .mp4, .mp3. For 3D models, I've been using .stl and .obj. A great place to get models from is Thingiverse. Thingiverse is full of thousands and thousands of models and it's community created. So it means there's a ton of awesome stuff out there and a ton of trash. So you've got to filter through to find what you want. I've got a collection full of heaps of things that I want to print. I just need to pick my favorite to get going. I'm wondering some black filament purely just to print this Megabot from Big Hero 6. The dude model it up, add some magnets. Like that is awesome. Now my first multi-part print was this set of drawers. We did the blue drawers with the dark gray and I love the little contrast going on here. Uh, these little parts bins. So I can put like springs, uh, ball bearings inside. Worked out really good. Um, when I started printing, we've got like some like ridged layers and I realized that my nozzle was too close to the bed. And that's what a lot of 3D printing is. It's trial and error, letting it print, having a look at it, see how good quality it is and adjusting to work out. Um, but by the end, these walls here are pretty nice. Like you can see the layer lines, but they're very smooth surface there. So these came out pretty good. Next up, we have the NES switch cartridge holder. Uh, this is really cool. Multi-part print uh, took 24 hours to print. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Uh, things I don't like about it, these don't really like fit in snug, so that was annoying. Uh, the little lock latch broke off this morning on the inside and the outside was like really smooth, like insanely smooth all the way to the top where it needed a support for the inside. It printed this way up on the printer um, and then started to get some layer lines there. But all in all, for my like third print on the printer or fourth print, that's a pretty cool like thing to print. I've printed a little arm that helps hold the filament going into the printer, as well as a tool holder. I actually chucked it into SketchUp, modified it a little bit, exported it, ran it through 3D Builder, printed it, bam. Now we've got a custom tool holder that says Camshand and that's uh, really cool. Now modifying prints requires you to know how to 3D model. So lucky for you, I've got four banging pieces of free software. Up number one, Google SketchUp. This is awesome. I've been using this since high school. Uh, it's very easy to learn. I've used it to model furniture in our house for our floor plan to make sure things would fit. 3D model our home cinema to millimeter precision for Dolby Atmos speaker placement. I've got a full tutorial on my channel of how to 3D model in SketchUp. Check that out. It's awesome. I couldn't recommend it more highly. And the free cloud-based version of the software gives you a .stl export. Remember we talked about what file formats you need when you're looking to download stuff, 
that's one of them. If you've never 3D modeled, you have no idea where to start, Tinkercad is also good. Tinkercad is a free online model by Autodesk. It has a tutorial to walk you through how to move objects and just get an idea of 3D modeling in its essence. Moving on to advanced modelers, you've got a mesh modeler like Blender. Blender is good for things like this. If you wanted to make a little baby Yoda, you're gonna use something like Blender to get him made. That's English. It's also free, which is crazy. And it's mainly used for animation, but obviously you can just make a model and print him instead of making him like do something on your screen. And finally, if you wanna go with the pros, you've got Autodesk Fusion 360. This is free for personal use. It allows you to do like, I don't know, talk ratings and stress testing. It's what an engineer would actually use. For me, I'm fine just making like cool little stuff in SketchUp, it works well. So what's next for me and my 3D printer? Well, I've taken the bikes down in the garage and I'm gonna use this corner to build an enclosure. I'm gonna encapsulate the printer in a soundproof enclosure to not only be, well, soundproof, so I don't hear the printer printing, but it'll keep it dust free out of the garage's like mess. Cause as you know, on the channel, I build random things and this garage can get quite dusty. I've also picked up a new Raspberry Pi 4 and this will run an Octopi print server. Really cool way to send prints from my desk in the studio down to the 3D printer. It also detects errors through a camera, which is the little Raspberry Pi camera. So this teeny camera I can mount in the enclosure to keep an eye on my 3D prints, as well as create those really cool time lapses that you see where people's just like the prints just come out of nowhere in seconds, uh, where realistically it takes hours and days to print. So those little electronic projects will keep me busy, along with some little models that I want to design and print, such as a mini retro PC case for the Raspberry Pi, uh, custom LED lighting for the studio, and a MIDI keyboard for my PC. I'm gonna add some more knobs and faders uh, to be able to edit videos and do other things on my computer with that. And, and this is what the printer, I guess, is really about. Like, I'm getting super stoked about the projects and ideas that I can now do because over the past, like, you know, five years or something, I've been thinking of little projects in my head and I've been putting them back because I'm like, oh, when I get a 3D printer, I'll do them and now I can, which is sick. I'm really stoked to have this, uh, and hopefully today you've got some useful information to know if this is something that you should be going and purchasing, or if you need to wait a couple of years until they become easier to use. But yeah, that's it. Hopefully you loved it. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you back here in the next video. Bye. Before you go, almost forgot, uh, we need a name for the printer. So drop something in the comments, the best one, I'm gonna print it out and chuck it across the top here. All right, cool. Thanks, dude. See ya.